Hey students at the St. James School of Medicine, my name is Dr. Sean Patel and I am a board certified dermatologist as well as the owner of Prep Expert, a test preparation company in which I pitched on ABC's Shark Tank and closed a deal with billionaire Mark Cuban. And I'm making this video to share some study strategies for medical students because I was once myself a med student, although now I've gone into dermatology and only practice Teladerm. Um, so, you know, one of the biggest tips I can give you regarding studying in medical school is what I call the seven perspectives method. And I think that this is one of the best methods in order to retain information. So what is the seven perspectives method? This means that anytime you're trying to study material for any system, whether it's cardiology, GI, or um, dermatology even, what you want to do is use seven different sources in order to understand that information. So many students make the mistake of just reading their class notes over and over, right? But you're only seeing that from one perspective or understanding that material from one perspective. Instead, what you should do is use your class slides, your class notes, use a textbook, use um, a study guide. Uh, you should also, you know, potentially, I used to use audio, um, video you could use, you could use it um, in all kinds of different methods. You could use your friends' study materials, etc. But the point is to use seven. You could use uh, UWorld even. Um, but you want to learn it from seven different perspectives because you'll be able to understand that material so much better and really get grasp it, retain it. And once I started doing this in medical school, I ended up getting over a 260 on the step two of the USMLE. And uh, before that, I scored much lower and did not retain it material nearly as well. So I hope you guys put that into practice. Now, the other tip I wanna give you guys is balancing study with personal life. It's really important that during medical school, you take some time for your mental health as well as your personal life. Uh, make sure that you are spending at least once a week with your friends, doing things you love. For example, I used to love playing basketball and volleyball, so I would make time for that. But whatever it is, you know, don't get too stuck into the loneliest, loneliness of medical school. Now, I will say that, you know, in med school, it is the time to grind. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, especially when you're on rotations and studying for exams. Um, and know, you know, especially for me being on the other side now, that it's not going to be forever. It is a temporary thing. Now, I know you'll see some docs in the hospital that are doing it forever, but it certainly doesn't have to be. I know plenty of doctors such as myself who have a great work-life balance now, who work no more than 40 hours a week if you want to. But if you want to be one of those docs who work 60, 70, 80 hours a week for the rest of your life because you absolutely love it, um, you know, more power to you. But if you are worried that, you know, working 60, 70, 80 hours a week is going to cause burnout or, you know, it's not something you'd be able to sustain for the rest of your life or you want to start a family, etc., just know that it does get better. And uh, I'm a great example of that myself. So um, I'll leave you guys with that. I wish you all the best of luck in your med school journey. I know it's a long journey, but it's a rewarding one. I hope you guys all score really well in all of your exams match into the specialties you love, and have great successful lives. All right, take care, guys. Bye.